this lesson we will learn how to calculate the extra forces exerted on the sling if the sling is connected to a spreader beam and is not at 90 degrees but at some other less degree angle. One of the questions that may come to your mind is how far off of 90 degrees can a lifting sling be before these horizontal forces start adding up and start to count? The answer is that at any angle less than 90 degrees it will add horizontal forces. How much? Well we need to keep in mind as the angle gets littler the forces on that sling get larger and larger. So let's just take an example. Let's say this is at 80 degrees, this angle right here, which is really not too much. At that angle, the horizontal forces will increase, it will add one and a half percent of the forces that it would normally have if it was just 90 degrees. That's not too much, but you think about it and look at it, it is important. Let's go down to 60 degrees. It adds 15%. And if you then go to a 45 degree angle, that adds over 41% extra load on this sling as it's lifting the load. So let's suppose that this was going to support a thousand pounds on each side. So you have a 2,000 pound load. If it were at 90 degrees it would be a thousand pounds on each of these slings. If it's at a 60 degree angle rather than the sling having a thousand pounds on it, it's going to have a thousand one hundred fifty pounds in that example. If it were at a 45 degree angle, the sling would be feeling like it's lifting one thousand four hundred ten pounds. So any angle less than 90 is going to add up forces that are horizontal. There's an easy way to know and calculate these forces without knowing the degrees exactly. That comes back to our first lesson where we would need to know the length of the strap or the sling length. If you remember we called that L and then we needed to know the height above the load that the beam was. So we took L and we divided it by H and then we multiplied that answer times one half the load weight. So we go times one half the load weight. And that would equal the total amount of force in that sling itself. The principle that we just talked about, rather than having the sling at 90 degrees, it may be at an angle. If we know the length of the strap, 
if we know the height above the lifting point to the load, the spreader beam and the load, even though they're far apart, it can be considered just like we had before where we have one hook point and we have two slings. The forces on that sling is the same principle even if you have a spreader beam where those two points are separated from each other. So again we do not need to know the exact angle here. We can just take our measurement of the length divided by the height. The answer of that you multiply times one-half of the weight of the load. So even though you use a spreader beam, if it's not 90 degrees, there are additional forces on that sling. In our next lesson, we will talk about how to lift a load and make it level.